Now, what itself then costs is one problem. Secondly, we are told there is absolute fuel supply assurance. Under no reason will, even if the deal, Indo US deal is terminated, we would continue to get uh, fuel. And uh, MDNR Iron said that I, we cut something from the separation plan and pasted it here, and it has been achieved. But if you read that point, it doesn't take to be. It doesn't take you to be a, a great lawyer to understand that there is no need, no fuel supply assurance there. Basically, what is promised in Section 5.6a of uh, the 123 Agreement is that the United States government is committed to take up the issue with U.S. Congress to modify, to amend the laws, and that law is the Hyde Act. So when they say we don't have anything to do with Act, right there what their sign says that the U.S. government is committed to change the Act. But there is no, no chance of this getting amended because uh, this is the very same act, I mean these very same fuel assurances were presented to U.S. Congress in December 2006 and they deliberately threw all of them out and put clauses which are contrary to this, that is, tightening up that India will not get fuel assurances. And now to say, to be naive, to say that the US government has committed to us that they will modify it. Let them first go and modify it first, and then come back with the 1 3 agreement and we can sign it, if that's the case. Of course, there are so many other things which need to be changed also, but fuel supply assurance is simply not there. So what we are going to have after this deal is uh, 25 or 30 parapos all around the country. And they will all sit as small limits and it doesn't take uh, just only nuclear weapon testing is not the only thing which is going to lead to a termination. If we are seen to be too friendly with Iran, it, we could endanger this deal. If we do not patrol the Indian Ocean along with the US navies and we keep refusing to board other people's uh, ships, it would then uh, get close to that kind of a situation. If we do not uh, work in concerns with the United States on uh, a fissile material cutoff treaty, we could be in that trouble. So we are unnecessarily getting into all these things, which all of them could lead to uh, the termination of fuel supplies, because that's the only thing by which they can really hold, the stranglehold is in fuel supply. And specifically on that, we have absolutely no, no assurance given by the US government. And this would be one single point, if uh, among many, which need to be addressed on priority with the government when they face them. The other thing about imported reactors is, you, you know what happened with Bhopal. Union Carbide had a plant, we had an accident, almost 7,000 people got killed and 50,000 people also got permanently injured, very severely injured, and even today, Union Carbide's contribution has been pittance, something like $400 million or something for this entire uh, damage. And they have escaped. Uh, all those people have escaped uh, uh, killing out of this. Now Dow Chemical is taking over Union Carbide and they are arguing with the Indian government that they should go scot free. You consider uh, a nuclear reactor by, made by Westinghouse or General Electric in your neighborhood which goes into a Chernobyl type accident. And my question is, who is going to hold the liability? If that exactly that thing happens in the United States, US law insists that up to 10 billion US dollars will be immediately made available. This is the Price Anderson Act of 1959, which assures the neighborhood, the people who are affected, the neighborhood which is affected, Ten billion dollars as a minimum right away without any court action. And subsequently, there is scope for getting even more. And how is this built up? This ten billion comes from a fund, from a liability fund with all these companies, nuclear companies contribute to. Now, do we have anything similar? We have nothing even for our national nuclear power stations, we do not have it. So if tomorrow and I, I know because I was the chairman of the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board when Narora fire was investigated. The Narora fire brought us just that close 
to a very severe nuclear accident. And it would have actually um, caused a large amount of radioactive release, which would have affected even locations as far as uh, Aligarh and other places, like now. And we just escaped that. If that kind of a situation happens, even within the Indian Atomic Energy Act, today we have no liability clause. So when we talk about the uh, Indian Atomic Energy Act to be amended, etc., it's not an easy matter that uh, somebody just uh, says the eyes have it, eyes have it, and, and pass it. Uh, it will be quite dangerous because all these things need to be looked into there. Some substance is that the American industry wants all these reactor industries which are coming here, they want a liability-free situation. They want to be totally absorbed of those uh, things which cannot be done. Our own regulatory system will be almost totally incapable in the first 10 years to do a regulatory process properly. Because these reactors are not known to uh, our regulators, not even known to our nuclear engineers here. And therefore, there will be a very high risk period in the, in the initial 10 years of a foreign reactor being here, when uh, we will really not know what we are doing. Then, of course, the question of nuclear terrorism, as you know, uh, the nuclear power plants are becoming perhaps the highest uh, rated targets uh, for terrorists. And not only ours, but now if you have an Indian reactor and, a, and an American reactor, you can guess uh, which one will be uh, a more valued target and where uh, the problems will come. All this will again result uh, in public uh, getting affected, a very large number of public getting affected in case there is something. So, with taking all this into account, uh, what is the urgency of expanding nuclear power immediately at an enormous rate uh, that the Prime Minister wants? especially as uh, uh, Mr. Patnaik said, uh, when it will add only to a small percentage. We can get actually almost 15% uh, increase in generation, effective increase in generation by taking care of the losses. The, even today there are about 35% losses in transmission and distribution. All these are not being attended to. And then we make a very false bottomless case of saying that it is nuclear power, and that to 35,000 or 30,000 of imported nuclear power is what is going to save the country from uh, energy depletion. I think it doesn't make sense at all, and uh, therefore, uh, and even for this, the current the ask for uh, so many things out of India, including uh, subservience in. Uh, foreign policy and in many other areas, and I think the only thing that can be done with this deal is to scrap it.